In this video, we're going to look at some aspects of factoring polynomials. The big point is that factoring is undoing multiplication. So here's the outline. We'll look at multiplying binomials that happen to produce quadratic polynomials. Then we'll look at uh, factoring those quadratic uh, trinomials and we'll look at two different methods to be able to do them. So first of all, let's look at multiplying binomials. We want to look at this in detail because factoring is undoing this process. So I'm going to think of this CX plus D as one term and I'm going to distribute that multiplication over the addition of AX plus B. Once that's done, I'm going to distribute the AX over the addition of CX plus D and B over CX plus D. Here those middle terms are like terms and so we can add them together. Now let's look at a specific example. Say we've got 3x plus 2 and 4x minus 7. There's that first bit of multiplication, another distributive law. But now there's some like terms here. Combine those like terms, and there's our final result. Now we'll look, there we are. We're looking at multiplying two binomials, and we get a second degree trinomial. That's what we mean by a quadratic polynomial. It's any polynomial of the form, as long as the alpha, the leading coefficient, is uh, not zero. So here are some examples. There's the example that we just produced. The, we're going to call this a quadratic polynomial. It's kind of hidden in, in a way. The idea is that, that notice the y value would need to be x squared. So it, y squared would be x squared squared, so that would be x to the fourth. So this, this particular one is what we will still call that a quadratic polynomial. Here's another example of a quadratic polynomial. In this case, the beta, the middle term happens to be zero, but alpha is not zero. Notice that. Here are some non-examples. This is a trinomial, but it's not a quadratic polynomial. It's not a quadratic uh, trinomial because there's the x and we don't have an x squared here. Here's another example. In this case, it's not a, it's not a second degree kind of thing. It's a first degree. The alpha, in a sense, is equal to zero in that one. Here's another one. Now, notice how close that one resembles this one, but this one is not a quadratic because notice the y in that definition would just be x, and this is not an x squared. Okay, so we're going to look at two methods for factoring quadratic trinomials. First of all, remember that multiplication. If we were looking for this particular example, if we wanted to factor this example, then we're looking for an a and a c that multiply together to give us 12, and b times d is equal to a negative 14. We're looking for the a, b, c, and d so that a, c ends up being 12, b, d ends up being minus 14, and a, d plus b, c is equal to a negative 13. And so now we can just compare those terms. There's the 12, and it's got to be a, c. There's the minus 14, and it's got to be b, d. And there's the minus 13, and it's got to be that uh, some of those two products. Now, there's only three choices for an a and c that will multiply, if integers that will multiply together and give us 12. There are, however, eight choices. Once those, once a and c are chosen, then there's going to be eight choices for uh, b and d that multiply together to give us a minus 14. Uh, so there's the, the eight choices that could multiply together to give a minus 14. So the solution here is to from the 24 possible choices where AC is equal to 12 and BD is equal to a minus 14. See, we can just check those 24 possibilities until we find an AC pair and one BC pair. So we're going to pick one of those three and one of those eight so that when we take the a times the d plus the b times the c, it's equal to a minus 13. 
if none of those possible choices work, then we'll say that the polynomial is prime. The next method we could call a middle coefficient method. It's often called factor by grouping. And the idea is to look at this line in the multiplication process. So here's the idea. We're going to focus on that middle term. Now notice two big observations. That B C plus A D, the multiplication of those two numbers, is that second coefficient in the trinomial. We know what that is. The B C times A D, we want to find out what they are. We don't know them yet. But notice that they're really the same thing as the first coefficient times the last coefficient. That's, that's an important observation. So if we took that first coefficient times that last coefficient, we know that that's the same thing as multiplying these two numbers together. We're going to use those two facts to find out what B, C, and A, D are, and then we'll factor by grouping. So let's consider this quadratic polynomial. And notice we know what A, C is, we know what B, D is, and we know what the sum of those two are. So we're seeking that B, C, and A, D that make up the middle term. B, C plus A, D has got to be equal to a minus 13. And when those two multiply together, it's the same as multiplying the first term and the last term of this polynomial. Here's the solution. We'll separate this product of the first term times the last term. Notice that there was a minus 1 here. But there's the 2, the 2, and, and the 3, and the 2, and the 7. Okay, so there's the factors. We're going to group those into two groups. We're going to take some of these factors and make a BC out of them, and the rest of the factors will be an AD, and, and they've got to be the right kind of thing, so that's equal to a minus 13. So we can search through the possibilities and make that happen. Again, there are a finite number of choices for separating the factors, and if none of them work, then of course that polynomial is another prime polynomial. So once we know what A, B, what the A, D, and the B, C are, then we can just factor by, by grouping and find the final result. Factoring polynomials is undoing multiplication. We looked at two strategies for doing this. One of the methods was called the leading trailing coefficient method, and the other one is sometimes called the middle coefficient method or factor by grouping. Now, some things that you should know. There are algebra systems that do a great job of factoring. Here are two free ones. GeoGebra is one, and Wolfram Fram Alpha is another. Here's what the GeoGebra screen looks like. There's a number of choices here. You can actually just start uh, doing GeoGebra here. We'll do the computer algebra system in GeoGebra. So we'll ask it to factor. Ask it to factor the polynomial that we were looking at before. And then we can just press enter and it knows how to do that. Similarly, we can look at the Wolfram Alpha site. Both of these sites are, are free and easily. Here's the Wolfram Alpha page. I've already uh, typed in the command to factor that quadratic uh, polynomial. Um, and we'll just press enter. And you'll notice at that point that it f factors the, the polynomial and also gives us some other information about the, the graphs of the polynomial. And, the point is that the important thing for you and I to do if we're going to understand factoring is not just to have a magic algorithm that produces the result because there are powerful magic algorithms like GeoGebra and Wolfram Alpha. So there are these computer algebra systems that are free, readily available that can actually do the factoring. We want to understand why the factoring works and why the algorithm that we use works. There are some other resources that will be available associated with this video. I'll give a PDF for this presentation so you can walk through it. I'll, uh, there'll be a, a link to this video presentation. There's some uh, Khan Academy factoring polynomials. You might look at this video. It gives you 
an example of actually working out uh, a case of using the middle coefficient method or the factor by grouping method. And there's also some practice problems in uh, web work if you happen to be in the class. Okay, great. That's the idea of factoring a trinomial.